All right, Coach Burnett. Uh, I got my uh, I got my guy here. I got a I got a spy. If you can't see, I got a uh, I got a uh, special guy here that's uh, helping me out. So for <laughs> We got, got Ferdy on your head. Yeah, I got Ferdy on my head. So, all right, Coach. So it's it's. <laughs> <Friday>! <laughs> we have entered. Let's just you know what you know. I know you love Ferdy, and I know that we were going to be able to see you guys this week Bye. with the social distancing. We were going to try and get together, and it kind of kind of like we're staying apart because it's what the thing to do right now. You got your mom holds uh, Ruth. Your mom. Ah, uh, oh man, seventy three. Ruth 73, my dad's 71, my mom's 72, well, my mom's going to be 72. So they're the big ones that we are uh, trying to protect in this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 thing, right? Well, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I had, um, I, last couple of days, I had real bad allergies, man. Like, and I get them every, you know, this time of the year. And, you know, I, my mom needed a few things and I went to the grocery store and I'm kind of walking around. And at one point, man, I, I felt like I had to sneeze. And it's just like, I didn't, like I held it in because, it, you know, the height of, of where people are at right now, emotionally, you know, with this is, uh, you know, it's scary. And, and so, I mean, even when I went to my mom's house, I mean, like I said, I knew I had allergies, but we kind of did the exchange where I just dropped stuff off on her back porch and wiped it down. And I'm just trying to be really careful, man, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we're in such a situation right now. Hey, for go ahead and with mom real quick, okay? Mom's got to talk to you, okay? All right, yep, go ahead. I'll see you back here in a little bit. Um, but we're in a situation right now. It's real delicate, obviously. Um, I mean, the, first things first. They have postponed. They keep saying they've postponed the Ohio State Wrestling Tournament. Now they're postponing the United States. They're, they're postponing the, the, the World Olympics. Right, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics is is at least 2021, right? Why do you think Ohio is waiting to cancel their their events? I think the OHSA is trying to is really really trying to do what's best for all the kids. Um, I know they're in a, they're in a tough spot right now. You know, if there's any way they can make it work, I know they'd like to try to do it. Um, you know, that being said, wrestling's a different animal. Um, I see it uh, as being extremely difficult to to to, uh, to to have the state tournament this year, um, especially with the way things are trending currently. Um, you know, that being said, our kids, you know, I had kids hit me up on Sunday night, you know, uh, you know, two hours before the uh, before the announcement as far well, no, r no, right after the announcement as far as everything being shut down this week. And they're asking about, you know, if they can work out this week. And it's like, you know, so so our guys are. You know they're they're still anxious and they and they, they sure would like to do it, but but they're also realist and they're and they're smart kids. So you know it's just one of those things where um you know you, you we're, we're, they're they're just going to deal with what they can deal with right now and control. You know they got to they got to control the, the the controllables and not worry about the uncontrollables at this point. You know you think about you guys were in this really good position, Illyria. Um, you know you had a like a twenty what was it twenty twenty to zero lead over Saint Edward. In the uh, dual state championship, they come back and they beat you 36-30. So just madness all around. You're right there to beat St. Edward and Brexville. You know, there's a couple other Division One programs that are right in the mix. Um, this is a tough, tough one for you guys to swallow because you were in a position to win the tournament this year. You know what I mean? Like, how do you explain that to your guys? How do you explain that to, you know, Dylan Shaver never won a state title in Ohio. He might go down, you know, if we don't have the tournament, he might be a go down as one of the best guys to ever to never win, right? He's pretty good. How do you explain yeah, it to guys like that? How do you explain it to, you know, uh, Mick Burnett might not get another shot at winning another state title. You know, he got one last year, but how do you explain it to your sons? Um, you know, how, how do you explain it to those kids, Eric? Uh, so, so when this first started going down, man, like that that Tuesday before the state tournament. Of course, you had the Arnold Classic and what happened there. And, you know, people started asking questions, you know, are we going to be able to get this tournament in and, and things like that. So, of course, you know, on Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday that week, there was an announcement that they were going to have the tournament with limited fans. And um, I was pissed, you know what I mean? But but but, but I had to, you know, you, you got you to gotta wait, okay? You got you to gotta, you gotta wait, you got to hesitate, you got to educate, and you got to figure out a way to relate, all right? Because... I didn't know what was going on. You know, I was angry that my kids weren't going to have an opportunity, potentially. I was angry that their grandparents, 
you know, if they did wrestle, their grandparents weren't going to get to go watch them in a tournament. You know, um, but I didn't know the gravity of the situation at that point. Uh, obviously, our kids didn't. You know, so the next day on, on Wednesday, the kids are asking about it. And, and I'm like, hey, you know, everything, you know, our mantra has been control the controllables and, and don't worry about what you can't control. So, you know, we went that way with it, knowing, knowing that on Thursday, you know, there, there could be some craziness happening. Um, so, so I guess what I'm trying to get at here is perspective. Okay. That, that, that the more you the educate yourself. And of course I don't know enough about, about the situation, but I got to trust the people that are in charge and the medical professionals that I've talked to, um, you know, they know what they're doing. So when you're talking to your kids about it, yeah. Um, okay. You might not get your opportunity to be a state champion. You might not get a chance to win it again. Okay. But, but moving forward, okay. Uh, what are you going to do? Are, 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 is this going to be your defining moment? It was last year, your defining moment. I mean, your defining moments are hopefully in the future, right? So regardless of whether you have a state tournament this year or, or not, you, you are going to continue to, to make your name um, in the future. And, 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 and I think that's resonating with our kids, I, I think, and I hope that that's making sense with them. Um, because, I mean, really, what else can you do? You know, you're not going to sit around and just be pissed off about it forever, right? You got to move forward and you got to take, you got to, um, I don't know, you got to make the best of it. So you'll spend time with your family right now. What are you guys doing on a daily basis? You know, you obviously have two of the guys on your team who are qualifiers, Mick and Nate, both returning placers or returning champ. <laughs> You know, and and we're in this like no contact zone. We're in this like stay home zone. I know that you guys have access to a big training facility, um, but like, what do you do with them if you don't go to the training facility? What are what is it full out Rocky at the Bernatch right now in Elyria? What are you guys doing? So I my, my workout took me a little bit longer uh, because I couldn't find the jump rope I liked. That's because uh, old Nate Dog Nate Dog was out in the garage with my favorite jump rope. So so yeah. <laughs> you know, of course, <laughs> I'm uh, just thinking, you know, I, I've never had to tell my sons to work out. They've always kind of done it on their own. Yeah. Um, but it's cool to see, man. You know, we got a dog on Friday, and, and, and Mick took off with the dog and went for a run. And, and uh, it, 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 it's just cool to see them do that. You know, I let our I let our wrestlers know on our team um, – they need to set up a routine. They need to, they need to have something. And I'm talking more for mental health than physical health. I, I know that they're going to do stuff and stay in shape and things like that. It, you know, that, that's just how they are. Most of these kids have, have grown up just exercising, being physical, but, the, but you have to have a routine. And I, I, I don't care if you get up at seven in the morning, eight in the morning, whatever, you know, I, I would prefer they wouldn't sleep until noon, but you got to have a routine. And, and I shared with them what, what, what I've tried to keep as a routine for me. And, I, and I'm just, I'm hoping that that's what's happening right now, just for their own mental health. You can't get sucked into this. I mean, it can cause depression. You know, if you, if you get, you just sit around your house and you don't do anything and, and uh, you got nothing to really keep you going for now, that's not a good thing. You know, my wife said the social media is a big trap right now. A lot of people are on there, and it's obviously pretty divisive right now in, in America. And whose fault this is, and response, and all these other different things. But my wife's like, you know, that's not healthy for you to sit there and stare at your screen. It's like obviously very unhealthy. And we have kids that right now they don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. And the one thing you can't do is sit around and be pissed off. That's the one thing you can't do. It's just not healthy. Okay. There are things that they can do and, and it might take a day or two. Okay. But they're going to figure it out. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, I, at least I know the kids that we've worked with, all right, whether it's, whether it's Elyria, Perrysburg, BTW, whatever, these, these kids are resourceful and they're good kids and, and, and they're going to figure out what to do, whether it's, I mean, Hey, right now they're, they're telling everybody go to a park right? Go to a park. You got a park right by you, right? It's amazing. Okay. So maybe things that we took for granted before, you know, in light of what's going on, right? And, I, and I, like I said, I, I don't want to diminish, okay, the importance of what happened, okay? That these kids lost their, their wrestling tournament, that basketball lost their tournament, hockey, the NCAA. I get it. Okay. I understand that importance, but, but what do you do about it? Okay. What do you do about it? Do, do, do you make the best of it? Do you make the most of it? Like I said, we got a dog, right? We never had time to have a dog before. We couldn't have one. We couldn't properly take care of them. Now we got a dog. Our kids are taking the dog for a run. You know what I mean? They're hanging out. They're watching movies. Last night we watched Monty Python for crying out loud, man. The Holy <laughs> Grail, right? It's like Nate Dog and I, you know. Um, 
it's just things like that, man. And it, it, you got to make the most of it, man. Right? I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do. So, as far as kids, um, you guys do a really good job at Elyria of getting kids to the next level. And I know that the big thing with you and your your dad was your dad was a steel worker in Lorraine, and your dad's big thing was you know use wrestling to uh, you know, create opportunities for you in life, education, and um, you kind of bucked the system there for a while. You were going to work at a machine shop. And your dad was just not having that, and then you got work. Started working in like court system, right? You started doing uh, yeah. Initially, I was with the court. Yes, yeah. Probation, but now you're like basically you are a school home, a, a, a school home counselor, and what you do is you go around and check, make sure kids that are complying with the law. Because in the state of Ohio, and like I think most states, you have to have you either got to be online, homeschooled, or you got to be attending either a public school, right? That that's the deal yeah. in Ohio. Yeah, I mean, House Bill 410 has it broken down to basically where I come into play is with three different thresholds. You know, if a kid gets to uh, 30 consecutive unexcused hours of absence or 42 in a month or 72 in a school year, if they're on unexcused hours of absence, um, that's when I intervene, uh, typically um, with, with an intervention plan. Now, um, there's intervention prior to that, um, and the major difference with that with that bill being um, that they've broken it down to hours and, and, and minutes at this point. So... Um, yeah, I have a I have a broad caseload. Um, there are three of us in our department in Elyria, and um, man, it, it just it keeps me on my toes uh, daily. I meet some amazing people. I get to work with some amazing families and, and, and coworkers, and um, so yeah. I mean, when you talk about like taking wrestling to another level, you know, without wrestling, I'm not doing that. There's no way. You know, without Clarion University, I'm not doing that. So yeah, I mean, absolutely, got to go there. Fork in the road. Fork in the road. Let's just say fork in the road. Would you be involved in wrestling at the level that you've been involved had you stayed at the machine shop? Fork in the road. What do you think? I I, I just don't think it would have been. I don't think it would have been permissible, man. I, I think my what my dad was telling me you know, at the time is like you know you can get locked into these hours and uh, you, you you know eventually you're you're probably going to be too tired to coach at least on the level that I, I was hoping to coach. Um, so yeah, uh, my dad gave me a lot of good advice in my life, but I think. Um, Right there, that was definitely a fork in the road, fork in the road type of moment, and I'm and I'm glad that I took his advice there um, because it was intriguing for me at that point. You know, if you look at guys that you have in college right now, obviously Ben Darmstadt's the one I think of. He's an Elyria guy. Him and JT Brown both are we're both qualifiers, right? JT's at yeah. West Point. Uh, ben is at uh, Ben's at Cornell, and. Did they wrestle at the EIWAs? Did they wrestle? Yeah, they, they wrestled, yeah. Ben yeah. won, right? Ben won, yeah. I, w- I waited to hear the score. I, I didn't watch it. We were at our district tournament. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's one of those things. You, you, I, I love both of those kids, man. And I figured I figured I would watch it at some point. But, uh, but yeah, they both they both competed so well. And, of course, both qualified for the NCAA. So we were thrilled, man, thrilled. So, you know, when I talk about the next level, you know, you got the clarion which Clarion is probably academically on par with like a Kent State. These two guys we're talking about who, who were state champs for you and, and, and went through your, your little kid program all the way up. We got a Cornell guy and we got a West Point guy, right? Yeah. Did you ever, you know, like when you're early on doing this and you start up with, in 90, was it 98 you started in Elyria? 98? 97, 98 was the first year. So Gillespie senior year, my senior year of yep. high school. You guys me, me, Scotty, yep. Gillespie senior year. Yeah. Was that ever a thought in your mind? Like, we're going to send guys to Cornell and West Point. Did you ever think that was going to happen out of Elyria, Ohio? It's kind of crazy because when those guys were like, when Ben started taking hard classes in high school, I only tutored him like two nights a week, man. So I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to come through and, and make <laughs> Obviously, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Same with breeding, man. You know, breeding. I yeah, know, breeding's you know? at Princeton. You got a Princeton guy. Yeah, yeah. No, those guys are uh, those guys are <laughs> out of this world, man. <laughs> I mean, they were beyond me in eighth grade, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, how about like, Josh's dad? It was a cop. And I think you could take all the brain power that you two have together and he's probably got it in like a small pinky toe or something. The dude's a genius. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's a freak. I, you know, t- talking to Josh. Fortunately, we have the same sense of humor. So we have a lot of fun with that. But other than that, man, that dude dusts me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, 
when we talk about this moving forward, we got the new normal is what I keep hearing. What's the new normal at Eric Burnett? It's a dog now, apparently. A dog's in there somewhere. But what's yeah. your new normal? I don't even know what my new normal is. I guess my new normal is like hiking a bunch, which I, yeah, right. which is I like love, right? My school, old school resource officer sent me a text. He's like, I know you love this right now. But I like dealing with kids, obviously. But like, at what point are we going to get to this new normal? Like, I can only do so many hiking trails with my kids. You know what I mean? Like, we did right. three miles today. But like, what what is the new normal for the Burnett for the Burnett family? It's it's kind of like where you're at, man. Okay, I mean, today, you know, I was up at seven o'clock or so and had a little something to eat, and and, and then uh, whatever I whatever I kind of planned, you know, I had a giant box. J Bone got me a nice big TV for Christmas, man, and it, and it sat in a box until basically yesterday. Um, Who's J Bone? You know, so like the the viewers don't know who J Bone is. Like, Huh? Uh, you what? J Bone's Janet. That's my wife. Okay. Yeah. Well, the viewers don't yeah. know that. I know that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, she, so she hooked us. She hooked us up. But we, you know, how it is with wrestling season, man. That that TV sat in a corner. We didn't even get it out of the box, man. So um, yesterday, Mick helped me out. And we got it all set up. And uh, so, but but I had this box, man. This huge box. So um, one of my list uh, on my agenda today was to take that box out there and burn it, man. So I had a couple of phone calls to make, check my emails this morning, had a cup of coffee, uh, had some phone calls to make. I did it while I was uh, while I was burning boxes, right? Burning boxes, and the dog got to play around. We were throwing a stick around, man. He's he's well trained. I have I can't take any credit for it. He sits, he lays down, he comes to me when he, I, but that's not me. That's the trainer at the EPL, man. And then uh. Got to go work out, right? And here I am talking to you now. So that's the new normal. You know, figure out something every day that you need to do tomorrow. Dude, you ought to see my garage, man. I got to get in there. I got I got stuff to do right now, man. But take it every day and trying to, you know, got to stay up on work, checking emails there, and just trying to stay in touch with what's, what's happening right now, you know? Will there be Burnett Train Wrestling Camps? Do we even know that? Who knows, man? I was just talking to um, Keith Gavin this morning on the phone, man, um, about about that type of stuff. There's so many unknowns right now. I, I don't know. You, you know, it's um, it all depends. You know, they talk about flattening the curve. You know, if if people do what I think, if if we do what we're supposed to do right now, it's only going to expedite when we get going. I, I think you know. So I hope everybody's trying to do their part, like like we are, and and that way we can get this thing back on the road. But yeah, right now summer camps are unknown. Um, what are the dates? Keep people, uh, what are the uh, dates right now? What are the dates right now, tentatively? Uh, tentatively, wow! I got this thing right in front of me. June seventh through the eleventh was going to be the first four day, five day camp. We had one May eighth to May May eighth and ninth. You know what I mean, man? These are May eighth and ninth are right around the corner. Kind yeah, that's just of, not going to happen. No, I, I just I can't see it. Um, we're shut down. We're not, obviously we're not training anybody. Um, and, and, and that, I don't, I don't know when that's going to, when that's going to start up again, but obviously we want to have the camps, but we gotta, we gotta be responsible about it as well. So in talking to coach Gavin, obviously I talked to coach Gavin. That's a great relationship that you guys obviously built. Tell me about the recruiting process, Eric. You know, this just doesn't have to be about coronavirus, man. We can talk about, we, we, it, it's, it's, um, it's your world. I'm living in it. Tell me about the, the the recruiting process for Mick Burnett. Um, you yourself were a four time state champ in Ohio, and you always tell the tell the Dave Schultz story from Brexville real quick, and how you figured out and learned some really harsh reality as a high school senior. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a lot of great advice, and and a, the, the majority of it I took. Um, the, the, you know, the, the one piece of advice I didn't really take from anybody was uh, keeping my grades up. And uh, you know, the irony of the situation is I actually did a little better my senior year. Um, than, than I had throughout, throughout, especially my sophomore and junior year. But the damage was done. Um, Dave Schultz was at Wisconsin at the time, uh, came to the Brexville tournament. And um, after the finals, um, he came up to me. He was very nice. Um, obviously, I was in awe. It was Dave Schultz. Um, and he basically said, hey, you know, uh, good luck to you. You know, we're, we're not going to be recruiting you. Your, your, your grades are a risk. And, uh, and that was pretty much it. He wasn't, wasn't mean in any way. Like I said, he was very nice. Um, but man, you talk about a reality check at that point, because, uh, you know, um, schools talk and they find things out, um, you know, back, back in, back in 1986, 87, man, there, there wasn't any internet and, 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 you know, uh, boards and things like that. So 
there was a lot happening over the phone, I would imagine. And, and uh, so, yeah, a lot of the calls for, for me kind of backed off. Um, it was a tough lesson. But, but the, you know, the thing is, is it, it carried with me. You know, it, it impacted uh, my development, you know, my first year in college, maybe even my second year in college. And that's something that I had hoped with, with, with the kids that I work with, uh, um, the kids that Scotty and I work with and our coaching staff in Elyria, you know, we're trying to impart that, that knowledge on these kids where you don't want to have to have a struggling year or two because you set yourself back academically. You just don't want that. And especially now, because now schools don't want to, I mean, Clarion rolled the dice with me. You know, how many schools out there can do that now with a kid who's not a qualifier? I mean, it's, you know, you don't want to put yourself in that situation, especially when you're smart enough. And I joke around a lot about not being the sharpest knife in the, in the drawer, but, but I, I, I clearly was uh, smart enough to get the job done in the classroom and chose not to. Um, and that, that, that was, that's disappointing. And, uh, but once again, you don't want to have kids have to learn the hard way. It's crazy because you and, and Danny Mitch have followed this like parallel thing. You you did like a parallel thing. He was a non qualifier. It was called Prop Forty Eight when you were in college, when you were in high school, and then it became right. a non qualifier when I like the first year you could be a non qualifier was like ninety seven ninety eight. I want to say was the first year you were, you were a not you were a Prop Forty Eight, and then it became non qualifier. Right? You didn't yeah. have the high enough ACT SAT score to go, and it's a core score that goes with your GPA. Right. Um, obviously something that breeding <laughs> JT Brown and Darmstadt don't have to worry about, right? But like with No, the, no, once again, you know, lots of hours we spent after practice working on those practice tests together. <laughs> <laughs> those guys are geniuses, but like someone like you and Danny, you were in that position, right? Whether I think yeah, his was I, like, I, I, he transferred schools and he had some counselors that weren't on they weren't here together, and I think that's what happened that's what happened with Danny, I believe, right? Yeah, Danny, what happened with Danny was not his fault. Yeah, um, it was, it was, it was, it was transfer. No, it was a mixed up. Yeah, he had, the, he had the scores he needed. He worked hard in the classroom. It was just an unfortunate thing. Um, but you know you know how Danny is. Danny was a grinder, and that, that wasn't on him. So Danny had to do this thing where he, if he could graduate, and, and I think he got his year back if he graduated on time like he was supposed to. I think he did like a special thing, because Jimmy's always told me about it. And Racy's always told me, like, he had to do this special thing where you can take a chance on a kid. It's a rule where if they do, they can get a year back, essentially, okay. right? rather than lose that year. Because that first year, cause my brother Chad, was a he was a Prop 48 like you. And in that okay, first year, right. yeah, in that first year, you can't be on the team. No, we couldn't do anything, man. We, I mean, I was, I was wrestling with like a, a local high school kid, man. You, you know what I mean? It was like you, you, you couldn't have anything to do with the, with the team, or, or if they had a wrestling club, you couldn't have any part of it. That's so crazy. It just like blows my mind. But like, so they took a chance on you, and then you had this real unconventional, unconventional path where you're a four-time state champ. You weren't an All-American until your fifth year, right? Uh, yeah, 97, um, yeah, 91, 92. Yeah, exactly. And it was a really weird thing. I mean, I, I, had, I, I was prop 48, then I got hurt. So I actually had a red shirt my, the, the next year. Then I had the three years because you lost a year. You, you didn't get that year back. So you, you had four years to, to compete in three. Um, so that was pretty much the path I had, but I did have a red shirt year. So you were only able to make three NCAA tournaments. Right. Okay. And you made, did yeah. you make three? Yeah, I qualified three times. Yeah, three times. You probably would have qualified. Year. Yeah, you probably would have qualified four, but you lost that year. Yeah, well, you never know. But yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the first year I went zero and one. Man, it was like when you had to follow the guy. Oh, and follow that. your man to the to the finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that I, that was that was awesome. You know, going zero and one, and my 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 dad, and my brother drove all the way to Maryland, and <laughs> I just felt so bad. <laughs> you know, here they. They drove to watch me wrestle, and they ended up sitting in the stands eating Dippin' Dots with me all weekend, you know, <laughs> which which was cool to hang out with them, but I'm sure that's not why they came. <laughs> hey, one of the other years that you didn't all – which year did you wrestle the Perler guy? Uh, that was my uh, junior year. Yeah, that so was, was that, that Carver was Hawk guy? Tell that story real quick. You're wrestling – which Perler? Uh, Nick. Nick Perler. Nick. O- Oklahoma State. You're- yeah, yeah, Nick. You're at and you're at Carver Hawkeye wrestling Oki State guy. Yeah, it was wild, man. Um, it, it was wild, and I, I yeah, and it, it was one of those things you don't even think about it. And I ended up catching him. Um, I mean, the guy was really good. 
um, obviously. And I caught him. And then when when the match ended, so you know they they called the pin, and the and, and Carver Hawkeye went nuts. And uh, I mean, probably I don't know how many fans they had in one section of the arena, but they they went they went crazy. And you know, so of course you stand up, you're feeling like a you're some kind of stud, and you know they don't even know you. I mean, it's like you just be the guy that they needed you to be, you know, <laughs> so they could. So they can win it's like title. the Illyria fans are cheering for some for some dude from LaSalle, right? It would be like the Illyria right, right. fans or like the St. Ed's fans would be cheering from a dude from Toledo from right. Start or Perrysburg to beat an Ed's guy, right? Like or beat an Illyria right. guy, it would be like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much guarantee you nobody from Iowa knew, knew a guy named Eric Burnett from Clarence University. That's, that's nah, not happening. And then did you lose in the quarterfinals that, that year? Yeah, I lo- I lost his capital from uh, from Iowa. So then then right. they loved it. Then they like loved well, it. Wait. No, I lost to Zapital my senior year in the quarters. Okay, my junior year Zapital beat me in the first round. So the first round I lost to Zapital and then I won two matches in a row. The second one being being Perler. Oh, so you wrestled Perler in the Concies. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, eliminated him from the tournament in the Concies. What's that? You eliminated him from the tournament in the Concies. Yeah, I believe that's how that went. Yeah. And then talk about your round of 12 match your junior year. Yeah, I got I got beat up. Uh, it was 0-0 going to the third period. I was wrestling Adam Derangowski from Ryder. And he had uh, he had pretty much smashed me one other time at the Wilkes, Wilkes Open, up at, um, Wilkes-Barre. Wilkes-Barre. And um, so, go, yeah, going to the third period, um, I – well, let me see. Yeah, first period went zero zero. Second period, I had choice and I was scared, so I went neutral. And uh, I, I knew I needed to get a takedown. It's imperative I get a takedown. I didn't. So third period, I'm like, all right, you know, we'll see what happens. And he picked top. <laughs> he went. You and, want uh, Mitch Clark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went top. Yeah, he Mitch went top. Clark. So, so yeah, that wasn't pretty. It was. Uh, I think he turned me three times. Got a riding point. Then it beat me eight nothing. So um, to not today, that would be thirteen nothing. Yeah. Oh God. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thirteen yeah. nothing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Four back ones. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for making it even uglier than what it was. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> okay. So here's what I've noticed about Illyria guys. Let's just say Graham guys. Right? I'll take Graham guys as an example. Early two thousand Graham guys would go to college and they were struggling, and then he figured it out. Jeff figured it out. Like you figured it out. Well, our guys got to get good on top. They got to get off the mat. And I think obviously you knew that from the you knew that from 1991 NCAA tournament you knew that right mm-hmm. and that's what you really focused on from the next year and then you were an All American as a senior right yeah I mean it, there was so much time spent on the mat man um, even even my junior year I mean I, I spent I spent time working on the mat my junior year I just wasn't there man and you know especially with a guy like Darren Goski and you know we talk about it all the time about mental makeup. You know, I just wasn't there, and um, I, I think I was pretty good on the bottom, but I, w- I wasn't there. I wasn't where I needed to be. My senior year, I was mentally there. I had it. You know what I mean? Um, I figured out technique and things like that, but I was, I was, I was there mentally. That's what we've tried to do with all these kids. You know, you get a guy like Ben Darmstadt, whose best positions are top and bottom. Josh Breeding, his best position was top in high school. JT Brown, he won a state semifinal match with a big tilt. When he was a, when he was a senior in high school, um, you know, and, and typically our guys are pretty good at getting off the bottom, at least in high school, and then you, you know, hope that's going to carry over to college, or at least they keep developing on the bottom. And, you know, because it's been such a, you guys, you know, Ohio, we've had to evolve because PA is is so much better on the mat than us. I think it's a cultural thing, but you've really done a really good job. Obviously, Jeff Jordan did a really good job of it. Saint Ed's has always done a really good job of it because they got such a broad schedule of. They see so many guys who are good on the mat. But you guys, you know, you figured it out. It was like, we're going to have to figure this out and get better or we're not going to be very good. We're not going to be in the top, all the all the rankings. We're not going to win Iron Man and all that type of stuff. just doesn't happen for you if you don't get better on the mat. No, you're exactly right. But it's up to the kids. You know what I mean? You're, you can do all the top and bottom drills you want, man. But if they look at bottom and top and practice like rest time or screw off time or whatnot, then they're not going to get better. You know, that's one of the things. We try to mix it up in practice. Um, I know sometimes, you know, some of the kids on our team will feel like it's a little regimented, and, and, you know, but we try to mix it up, and maybe we'll do top at the beginning, or maybe we'll, you know, we do takedown right to a turn, or, you know, we try to mix it up to keep it more interesting for the, for the high school kids. Um, but it's like, you know, if you end up doing turns, 
you know what I mean, for a portion of your practice and they're spending time laying around on each other, you know, kind of grab ass and whatnot, well, they're not going to get better on top. Then when they really want it, even if they got to hold a guy down for 20 seconds, you know what I mean, at the end of a period, um, it may not be there for them, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, the mat wrestling is just so crucial to what we do going to the next level. Um, Okay, recruiting. I, You know, I kind of touched on it earlier a little bit, but tell me about your recruiting experience. was very different for um, Mick Burnett. Mick Burnett was a borderline Ivy League school guy. Um, Mick Burnett was a guy who had test scores to get into UVA. He could have got into the schools that you would have dreamed to get. He could have got into Wisconsin, right? You know, obviously, but like... um. Those places, the door was shut for you. It's a very right. different process for you as a father with your kid who's a state champ. He's a runner-up and then six as a freshman, right? Yeah. Six, two, one is what he's going to end up probably being. That's how we're going to categorize him, right? Um, two-time Ironman placer. So he's really good. Um, what was the recruiting process like for you? Because, you know, you've been through it so many times with so many different kids, but now it's your own kid. What was it like for you in the recruiting process? Well, you know, it's it's easy it's easier to help uh, other kids and and, and, and their families. Um, you know, when it's not when you know, I don't know much about people's financial uh, where they're at financially. Okay, and that was the difference with with Mick. You know, um, we didn't. You know, a couple of places he really liked. They just didn't have the scholarship money available, and um, it just was what it was. You know what I mean? They got they're, they're nine point eight scholarships they're using right now and it's like so they're looking at financial aid and um you know but then you have it's always going to come down to that that fit what's going to be the right fit you know what i mean who what's it going to be academically socially geographically um and, and financially what's the best fit and you know for mick um you know when when pit pit jumped into the mix in the summertime um and they 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 the only, I guess the reason they were late jumping in was because they didn't know what weight he was going to go. They, they were thinking 33, I think, and they were very crowded down low. Um, when they when they realized that he was going to be a 41, possibly 49 in college, that opened up a lot of um, opportunity for him at Pitt. And it just was, it was really cool. I mean, as far as... Eric, lost you for a little bit. I'm going to try and get Coach Burnett back on here. Let's see what we got. You got me back? Hold on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I got you back. Um, it was They were crowded down low, and what? And, and they were crowded down low is where I lost you. Yeah, they, well, they just, when they found out he was going to be a 41, maybe 49, that's when the opportunities opened up at Pitt. I and mean, it was just outstanding. I mean, it was outstanding. Get, get Just uh, get, going out, checking the campus out. Um, you know, I had been there before, but not in this capacity. Um you know, getting to know the coaches and, 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 uh, just looking at their culture, man. And, you know, and, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, having a kid two hours and 15 minutes away from home doesn't hurt either. Um, you know, whether he wants us around or not, that'll be up to him, but just to know that we could be there or he can get home if need be, that's really cool. You know, you're not going to hear any bad thing about Pitt for me, man. I love Pittsburgh and, and, you know, the proximity from downtown, you know, cause it's in Oakland, right? It's not even in, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh proper, right? It's Oakland. Right. Um, I just, yeah, I mean, that's one of the, the greatest city campuses I've ever been to. Like, I don't think yeah. it's even close, to be honest with you. The city's great. The people are super friendly. Um, and they've had some upgrades with facilities and other different things like that. And the resources are there to win. You can win a national title at Pitt, and no one's going to be like, oh, a guy from Pitt won? I mean, right. they're scratching their head a little bit when the Clarion guys win, right? But mm -hmm. when a pit guy wins, you know, they, you should win a national title there. I, I think things are in place. I think if you go in there with the right mindset and the right, you know what I mean, the right attitude, you can do it. I mean, I look at what they did at the, um, at the ACC tournament, man. They had, a, they had an amazing tournament. And um, I, I just think, I think Coach Gavin and his staff, they really have it going in a great direction, man. I, I, I think you can do whatever you set your mind to. And you, if, you, if you're going to have the right habits, I think you can make it happen there. You know, and he's going to be on a team with guys like Matthews, Bonacorsi, uh, Wenzel, obviously Philippi. I mean, they got guys, man. You know what I mean? It, it is. When I look up and down their lineup, they're, they're going to be really good for years to come. You know, they obviously lose two, a 97 and a 285, who I thought were really good. Um, but, 
man, look at the guys. Look at Bonacorsi. Look at look at the guys coming back with. I'm not talking like top eight. I'm talking these are top four guys. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, yeah. and they're, and their culture is so good. You know, it's just it's it, and that that that's what you need, especially now in these times. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, some other things I just noticed. We talked Olympics earlier. <laughs> the Olympic Games are going to 2021. Some interesting things are going to present themselves. We have a Logan Steber who is from your club, who retired last year. At, and on the heels of an Olympic year, Logan Steber must be pretty banged up to retire, you know, because th- this is when everybody's gearing up and making that final run. He retires, you know, and he won the world title in 2016 at a non-Olympic weight, one of the toughest weights I've ever seen. Could we see that guy back? Is that something do you think that we could see in the future? I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, Logan and I, you know, what, what, when we talk, we have the opportunity to communicate it's not about co- com- competing and things like that. You know, it's about coaching and about his club and in personal life, things like that, you know, just, just how things are going. I, I don't know. I don't know how healthy he is. Um, man, I, I don't know. I, I got nothing. I got no, no, I, I don't, I can't give you anything. I'd like to see that. it. I don't even care if you know anything. I just like to see it. Oh, <laughs> would you like yeah, to see it? I don't care if you know anything. That's not what I'm not trying to pull any info out of you. Wouldn't uh, you oh, like no. to see that? Well, for damn sure, I'd like to see it. Yeah, there's no doubt. That's all I wanted. No, I didn't no. need no dirt. I'm not asking for dirt. I'm yeah. asking for, wouldn't we like to no. see that run? Well, he's, I mean, he's one of the best ever. I love, love, always love watching Logan wrestle. Yeah, I mean, and now he's like married. Maybe she's like cooking him some food. Maybe he's gotten bigger and he, then he can suck down. He's not a tweener anymore. I don't know. I'm just being, I'm being, you know, I'm an optimist here. I don't know. My glasses. Three quarters of the way full here, Eric Bernie. I gotta find. We gotta find some good out of this, don't we? Right on. I'm with you. Yeah. Um. What do we? What's your brother doing? I'm gonna have to call him and talk to him. But like, what's your brother doing with Gray right now? Do you know? I, I think pretty much the same thing we are, man. You know what I mean? They're uh, they're having family. They're doing some family things together, and I think he's trying to drive Jody crazy because she's uh, she's working out of the house too. So Scotty and I are both pretty good at that because Jan J Bones, he's working here. So Who's Jay Bone? Who's Jay Bone? The people don't know. Jay Bone, my wife. Yeah, okay. she works from home. So yeah, I get to uh, me between me and Bob, our dog. You know, we're, we're torturing her, and, and uh, you know, only in a good way, of course. So I think Scotty's doing a little bit the same with Jody. She's working from home right now, so I think uh, I think they're having fun with that. Okay, that's cool. Um, you know, and obviously Gray, he's one of those guys. He's going to have to get some. It's gonna to have to start getting some more mat time, and I know that your brother's focusing more on mat time and 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 getting off the mat and and winning on the mat, like you know you have done with your sons, right? Yeah, Gray is Gray is Bing Bang Bing Bang Bing. He's probably running around the house, man, playing some video games. He's, you know, he's such a good kid, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just a great kid. My kids so, love him. Yeah, you well, you know, you spend a lot of time with him, man. The kids, the kids, are awesome. So I, I'm sure they're I'm sure they're making the most of this time. What's the future hold for you? I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. I know a lot of hiking in my future. I know that, but what's what's the future hold the next two to four weeks? What do you think? Um. Yeah. Okay. So I got some stuff I'm gonna do here in this office. Uh, I got some empty boxes here. I'm probably gonna burn them in my <laughs> fire pit. Uh, I got some. I like fire. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. I got, so do I. I got a burn pit. Yeah. It's 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 fun. Uh. I got a garage that needs to be cleaned out. I was hoping for maybe 10 degrees warmer outside, and I can tackle that. Um, I blew up the tire on my uh, lawnmower, so that was flat for half the winter, but I blew that up, so maybe I'll get that, ride that around a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, pretty much anything that work asked me to do and, and uh, you know, whatever else I need to do. I got I got. I'm 50 years old. I got to try to stay in shape. I got to make time for something like that uh, almost, almost every day. And, so I, give, I got stuff for to do. Give me your best workout so far. What's your best workout you've done? <laughs> have you ran more than two miles with dumbbells in your hand? How long have you jump roped? Tell me the best workout you've done so far. So I, I had yesterday and today. I, I kind of got back into this jump roping thing, man. Um, so YouTube picked out a pretty good, uh, pretty good selection of music for me, man. And uh, I just kind of got into it. So I intended on going 33 minutes. I ended up going 43 minutes. Jump rope. And it, I, jump rope. Jumping rope. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're 50. Yeah. Um, You're 50. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, something you I jumped over for 43 minutes. Oh, uh, yeah, man. It, it was, it's, it's one of those things. I, I started doing it when I was 10 years old. I didn't have the best feet. I started jumping rope, man. I felt like it really helped me. Both my sons do it. But, yeah. I, it, and I don't do I don't get tricky, okay? Because wrestle season ends. I do. I try to wrestle. I do a lot of wrestling with the wrestlers, you know. And then I, I but you got to You also got to walk around, make sure they're doing what they're doing. So I don't. I don't wrestle as much as I used to. But I wrestle. Consequently, I don't have as much of the cardio stuff, right? So then wrestle season ends. Then I get back to running or cross training or doing whatever. But jumping rope has always been something I like. And um, as I get better or as I get back into a little bit more, maybe start to do some double jumps and crossovers, things like that. But not so much right now, just just trying to get it in. And But like I said, you get caught up in the music. I mean, I was I had I had a playlist from basically when you and Scotty were, to, were toddlers, man. I had some uh, I had some zap with Roger Trotman. I had some uh, Rick James going today. I had some one way. I mean, it's crazy. You just get into it. You know, what are you going to do? Next thing you know, 43 minutes is gone. You're like, got a nice sweat going. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, hey. Yeah. Do you got anything else for me? I don't know, man. Hopefully everybody just stays safe and they're smart. You know, there's there, there's time to train. You know, I talked to I talked to some dads um that were talking about, you know, this is almost I feel like this is August. You know, we take we take that downtime in August and uh you know, the kids get back from Fargo and, and it's downtime. There, there's, we don't even know right now what you could be cycling for. You know what I mean? As far as your training cycles, what you're trying to peak for, we don't even have dates. So now is really an ideal time for some downtime as far as wrestling, you know, stay in shape. The kids can do it. They can do all kinds of stuff. Like they could take a page out of your book, man. They, they, they hit the woods, they hit the parks, tons of running trails. You know what I mean? Hey, maybe some of these kids might want a rollerblade, man. You know, I don't know. Throw some rollerblades on. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do right now. But as far as wrestling goes, I think wrestling needs to take a back seat to um, what's happening right now um, in our country and around the world. I don't know if I can have you leaving a better message than that, man. I yeah, I mean, and you're you're the wrestling fanatic guru, the guy who got me back into it. So um, stick around here. I'm gonna cut this live video. Thank you for the time. Stick around real quick, okay, Coach? All right, right on. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, Thanks man. I appreciate it.